Today we're going to be setting up a grid map system for a town builder. If you look at my screen here, we're going to start by creating a C sharp script called uh, X. Oh. Waiting for it to compile and open up. There we go. Once we have that opened up, we're just going to set a few variables with this. So instead of a public class, we're going to get rid of this and change class to string. Okay, before we can set up our actual grid, and we're going to want to assign a few variables. We want a public int. So we're just going to make this a lot faster. Rows. And a x offset. Lastly, one more float. This is just our equation. We'll call it uh, x equation. It's going to be a little bit different and a little weird, but we got to do this little arrow thing here. And then map it. This qrt, and then another map of and input our radius and then our x offset and subtract it by another map of pal pal radius times and this number right here the 0.5 is going to change based on your and we're going to get to the blender modeling. It's going to change based on that. And then lastly, the offset. My bad, it's not an and, it's times. That's our main equation here. And we're going to need to go back into Unity. And create another C sharp script. <clears throat> and we're going to call it X. It's done we're going to open it up and again we're going to this is going to stay in mono behavior we're going to create a few variables here so we're going to need a public key object for a hex prefab which we're going to create in a minute we're going to need to reference our struct And I'm going to create a header here. This just makes it easier to organize in the inspector. Title variables. I don't have to do this. This is one's completely optional. Then we're going to set up some variables. So we're going to want columns, rows radius and height similar to the hex grid next we're going to want another public float well, this is so you can edit because we're going to spawn these in this is just so you can edit where your hex grid goes so it's more customizable so z offset we're going to default this to two x offset I'm going to pop this one too. There we go. And next, we're going to want to set up a grid. And inside here, we'll set up our system. So, hex grid. We'll be going into hex grid. And then the columns, rows, and radius is going to get set up in the hex grid. So, hex grid. Rows equals rows. We just have to put that a couple times. Radius equals radius. Columns. Oh, 
what spot they're on. Oh, let me see those couple items. And height equals height. Okay. Now we want to create a void to set up our hex map. So void set up map. And we're going to want to reference this in the start function. So set up map and then just close, oh, just close it up. And start building it. Do a for loop. Okay. Sorry, I was row. Just to make it simple, I want to make sure that hex kit. Okay, so we're going to create a float over here. And we're going to make it offset. This is just because hex maps are complicated, they're five sided. Um, tile and they can't be as simple as a cube or a grid where it's just right above the other they're kind of diagonally placed so this will help with that spelling me down sorry make this equation we're going to do Floats. This is just going to grab the offset of our rows. Next, we want to do is add another for loop in this one under pull. Just make it simple column. Let's give that columns. And then we're going to want to. So, next, we're going to want to make a height for randomizing. And I'm going to send these here to do whatever but this genuinely right here will just be the height of your hex grid. If you want a flat hex grid, you just leave it at zero. Although it'd be a little hard to distinguish it, especially especially when you're, everything's optimized. Um, now we're going to want to spawn in a table. Or a, okay, what's my hex? Equals. Let's initiate. We're just going to try and set the position directly here by doing this. Plus, we're going to get our offset. Put in our row. Then, our height is just going to be the random number that we generated earlier, so height randomizer. And then lastly, our C coordinates will be in X grid, get row times our equation, so X grid. Our rotation is just going to be watermelon dot item, and that is that for that. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this, um, make this organized into a folder, you can just put in parent and then whatever transform you've assigned. But uh, we don't need to do that right now. It's not completely necessary. It'll just be a little, little less organized. And then we, that should be it. I believe that's it. So just give me one moment. I'm gonna go test it out and see if it works fully. There's the last few touch-ups I forgot to add in here, and we're gonna get on that right now. So at the top, I forgot to reference the the uh, offsets for our actual grid map. So we're gonna do that right now. So grid map grid dot x offset equals x offset. 
That's good. Got C offset. C offset. And then two more things. So I made a mistake here. It's not quaternon.identity. It's quaternon.euler. We want to rotate it to 90. And this might actually vary based on the model that you use for a hex grid. I'm going to show you the model I use and um, show you how I made it. Uh, and lastly, we want to set up the scale just to make sure everything works fine. So hex transform.local scale equals new vector three hex transform.local scale.x just to make sure. We're going to do the same to y and z. Z is going to be a little bit different. And also, if there's a little equation here. Just multiply it by that. That's good by the dot radius. Transform dot y. And set up as height. Transform dot set. as well. We just want to minus it by one. That's the only difference. Right. Let's drag this over here. I have mine set up like this. So if you want, you can get started with this, although it might not be how yours is because when you make your own model in Blender, everything is different. Um, and next we're going to jump into Blender and make a little hex grid. So I got my blank blender um, room right here and making a hexagon is rather simple. All we have to do is add a cube, just scale it up a bit, just set it up. And then when we go into our edit mode, so you can press tab to go into edit mode if you're not familiar with blender. All we want to do is just pick a side. I'm going to pick this side, control R and then click it to add this new line here. And what you want to do is scale it, press S then X. Just scale it out like that. And lastly, you just want to select all these on one side and just kind of push it in until you have like a hex grid that you're satisfied with. So it can be that small, it can be that big. It's just, uh, this is just your design based on how you want your hex grid to look. And then you just uh, simply export it. Although if you want uh, a more dynamic setup for your town builder, uh, we're going to want to separate the materials of this hex grid. So we're going to create two new materials here. And next we're going to, in edible, we're just going to highlight the top of the hex grid and just assign it to the second material and just leave it at that and then do our unwrap. Um, however you unwrap it and then just export it to unity. So I'm going to meet you back into unity and we're going to continue the setup. So we're back in unity and like earlier as I showed you, you're just going to want to create a game manager for your script and just drag and drop the hex map builder into there. And then these are the numbers I used. So what you want to do is drag your new hexagon model into the world space and just simply drag it back into the project manager to create a prefab. There we go, we can delete that now. Now we just want to reset the transform and then just make the rotation on Y90. That is very important to do. Um, and then yeah, so after you get these numbers set up here, we're just going to drag our prefab into the hex prefab. All we got to do is press play to test it. There we go. The hex grid is built. Although you can see there's a little bit of lines here based on my model. I haven't fully optimized it yet. Um, that could be fixed in Blender. It's it's just a matter of that trial and error, really. And yeah. So now we're going to have it so we can build a town out of, on these hex, hex grids here. I'm just going to get that set up here for the next video. So. What we're going to do is create an X script and we're going to call it the hexagon tile script. Sure. And then we're going to want to open up our prefab here. 
hexagon tile script. Drag it onto the hexagon tile script. And we're going to open that up real quick and just put in a few variables. So inside our hexagon tile script here, we're going to create, delete the two functions, and then we're going to reference our renderer. Grab two materials, and these materials are going to be called not selected, selected. We're also going to want a bool, a bool to reference that as well. So it is selected. This will be for the next video, but it's very, very important. And then lastly, a, a material array called max. Right. Um, so in our start function, we're going to want to set up some variables. So one will equal get component renderer. Renderer. And mats will equal rem dot materials. Make sure there's an S at the end of it. And now we're going to want to create some functions. So this is a Unity built-in function. It's pretty useful. It's called void on mouse enter and void on mouse exit. So this basically detects if your mouse is over an object, like I pointer for UI, basically. It's a little different though, and there's some restrictions I'll go through in a minute. First, we're going to set up the script. So is selected is going to equal to true. And then down in exit, it's going to equal to false. Now we're just going to want to have a visual for what happens when we do actually select it. So max zero equals select selected and then dot materials equals max so the new material setup that we just did we're just going to copy that in the mouse exit and instead of in mat zero selected it's going to be mat zero not selected and we'll hop back into unity i got two materials already set up here so we got the plain one it's just a regular material and then we got cell so i just made it blue just so we know that there's a difference we're just going to go into our hexagon prefab here and just apply it. So not selected and selected. Then I'm just going to move my camera up so we can see the hex grid. Give it a little test. So when I put my mouse over, it should turn blue. And this might be different based on how you set up your blender. So instead of zero in the mats, you might want to put one or two, or depending on how many different you have. But it seems to be working. It turns blue when the mouse is over it. One more thing to note before this video is over is that you need a mesh collider. So if that is convex or a box collider, because a mouse enter and mouse exit function does not detect the object within a box collider. And if there's a box collider over the collider of the hexagon, it can get blocked off and not work at all. So other block box colliders can disrupt the mouse enter detect. So it has to be it has to be either plain if you want it to be detected or just covered if you don't want to be detected. And that is it for this video. We're going to continue on to the actual town in the next one.